Hey folks, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, let's talk about EQ, specifically the difference between the channel EQ and the linear EQ. This can be a point of confusion for Logic users. I mean, why are these two EQs, why do they look identical, but have different names? And then that sort of begets more questions, right? Like number one, why do we have these two? Number two, what's the difference between the two? And number three, what's the best application for each one? I think these are fair questions. So I want to help you out with that. The best way I can put this, it's going to be a huge generalization, but 80 to 90% of the time, it's pretty much true. The channel EQ right here is best for mixing, while the linear EQ here is best for mastering. Now, these are not hard and fast rules. It's not black and white, but 80, 90% of the time, that's the case. So number two, why? Why is that the case? The channel EQ is best for mixing because it's a light and efficient plugin. You could have a session of 100 tracks and you could put the channel EQ on all 100 tracks and most likely you're not going to see any system overloads. While the linear EQ here, if you put this across 100 tracks and had them all EQing, most likely you're going to start to experience some strain on your max resources. Okay, even more questions. Why the heck would we ever use the linear EQ if it's just going to crush our max resources? Well, while the channel EQ is lighter and more efficient, the linear EQ is a smoother, higher quality EQ. So of course, now, why would we ever use the channel EQ if this is a higher quality EQ? Well, this is the toss up. When you're mixing, you have the opportunity to EQ just the kick drum or just the vocals or just the guitar, right? You can get very specific and narrow, and that's why the channel EQ is great. You're going to need to use a lot of plugins. You need to conserve resources. And when you're working on something so specific as a kick drum, the channel EQ is great because it is a high quality EQ. Now with the linear EQ and mastering, when you're mastering, most likely you're only working with a single stereo file that has the drums, the keys, the vocals, all piled in this one file. You don't have the luxury of EQing just the kick or just the vocals. At this point, you have to be judicious and thoughtful with your EQing and you need something high quality that's smooth sounding that's not going to tamper with the complexity of a full mix. There's a mastering engineer by the name of Bob Katz and he wrote a book called Mastering Audio, The Art and the Science. And in this book, he describes linear EQ as sounding more analog than actual analog EQ. In a way, it's kind of like saying it sounds more real than real, right? It's that smooth sounding. That's the why the linear EQ requires more CPU resources. So this is the big difference. Again, a generalization, but the channel EQ, lighter on resources, more efficient, best fit for mixing. The linear EQ, harder on resources, but smoother and higher quality sounding. Okay, so you would think that's where the story ends, right? Now, in Bob Katz's book, he gives the example of mastering a punk rock track. Now, punk rock obviously is a little rougher around the edges, a little gnarlier. So in that particular case, he said that he would choose something more akin to the channel EQ for EQing that particular mastering session because it's supposed to sound a little rougher around the edges. You wouldn't want to use something as smooth as linear EQ. Now, in the opposite direction, there's one particular case that I use the linear EQ when I mix. Now imagine you have a drum recording. We have the overheads, we have the hats, kick, snare, and much more. When you set up for a drum recording, we have the overhead mics above, you have a snare mic on the snare, a mic on the kick drum, and even though the snare mic is really just designated to record the snare drum, it's going to get bleed from the hats, it's going to hear a little of the toms and the overheads, it's just the nature of the beast. Same thing with the kick mic, same thing with the tom mics, it's going to catch bleed from the cymbals, from the snare, etc. Because all these mics are recording the same instrument at the same time, and they're catching bleed from each other, they are inextricably linked. That's why we have to go through the process of using the Logic Game plugin and flipping phase or polarity. And our job is to use this plugin to find the best phase relationship between different instruments of the kit. Or if you have a bass amp with a DI and you've mic'd the cab, or a guitar amp that has three different mics, these are all inextricably linked and so it's very important how they stack up together when you're playing them at the same time. So just for example, let me close all these plugins. I'm going to solo my overheads 
I'm gonna hard pan them to the left. I'm gonna take my kick here, I'm gonna hard pan it to the right. And then I'm gonna open the correlation meter. The correlation meter shows us if two or more tracks combined are in phase, which would be on the right side of the meter, or out of phase on the left side of the meter. So let's just play the overheads and the kick together. Take a look. As you can see, as the meter pulses with the kick hits, it's bouncing in the plus one section, which means that these two signals combined are in phase with each other. So let's flip the phase on this kick drum and watch the meter again. So now with the phase flip, the kick is out of phase with the overheads. And we can see that with the meter bouncing in the negative region, and also you can hear it, the kick sounds sort of weird and phasey with the overhead, so let's turn that off. Now what I found for myself particularly is when I go through this process of flipping phase and polarity and trying to make sure that the kick and the snare and everything stacks up well together, as soon as I started high passing with my channel EQ, because you know, we high pass to get rid of low end noise that's not really helping us, suddenly my snare would sound empty and thin and I would have to go back and readjust the phase or the polarity. Same thing for the kick. Suddenly things are sounding weird and wonky. And it's like, what is going on? And I realized and I found out that when you use the high pass filter on the channel EQ, it does something called phase rotation, which means it adjusts the phase of the snare track against the overheads and suddenly the snare is out of phase. I know that's a very high concept, but let me just show you, okay? Let's solo the snare. I'm gonna move that all the way to the right. I'm gonna move my overheads all the way to the left because this is the best way to demonstrate. I'm gonna open up the channel EQ on the snare and I'm gonna start high passing. It's starting at 20 hertz, I'm gonna go all the way up to 100. Watch this. I even open the analyzer here. As you could see, the snare went from the plus one region of this meter to the negative one because the high pass filter rotated the phase of the snare and now the snare is out of phase with the overheads where before it was in phase. This is a problem. You spend so much time messing with phase and polarity, you don't need this happening. It just further complicates the session for mixing. So instead of using the channel EQ, let's use the linear EQ. Open that up, get rid of this channel EQ. Now, same thing, we're starting at 20 hertz. Let's go all the way down to 20. I'm gonna start with a steep filter, 48 dB per octave. Okay, watch the meter. What's crazy is, is this snare has the bleed of the kick, which is kind of bouncing out of phase with the overheads. As I bring the high pass filter up, it removes some of that bass signal, which further puts the snare in phase and the snare signal never really changes, right? On the snare hits, it stays in the plus one area. This is huge. And this is why I use linear EQ not only for mastering, but this is the one purpose I use it for in the mix session. Now I may go and use the Vintage EQ collection to further fine tune the snare or these overheads, but for high passing specifically for multi-mic instruments, that is a bass amp with a DI signal, a guitar amp that's had multiple microphones, a drum kit with many microphones, I'm using the linear EQ for high passing to maintain phase relationships so everything sounds fantastic. So in a nutshell, Channel EQ for mixing, linear EQ for mastering, linear EQ for preventing phase shift. I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribe on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new blog posts, and new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.